Hi everyone, welcome. I'm just now getting the stream started. Uh, Chelsea and I have been working on a new background. Uh, we're trying the the list method. <laughs> Got a list of topics to talk about. So, uh, we're going to see how it goes. I need to figure out where to put me. I think that might be acceptable. Hi, everyone. Welcome, welcome. Uh, thank you for joining. Um, happy Tuesday. It's Tuesday, right? Depending on where in the world you are. You're Portuguese. Very cool. Uh, my family actually immigrated from Portugal, but I think they only stayed there a little while while they were coming from England and Germany and France and all over the place. <laughs> yeah, so I hope some of these uh, conversation topics are engaging, controversial, thought-provoking, and we can have a chat about it. I'm expecting Chelsea to join us any minute now. Uh, she's going to be my co-host today, as normal. Um, very excited to have her hop in. Hello, everyone. Welcome. Welcome aboard. Uh, please make yourselves at home. Uh, we're just starting the live. It's just getting going. Um, oh, I need to get my recording software going. Um, so we're going to stand by. There we go. Uh, we're going to go theater mode. Whoops. All right, change the window. There we go. All right, I got my recording software running. Uh, hello, everyone. Welcome or welcome back. We're just starting, and here comes Kelsey. Um, very interested to have a chat on some of these conversations. So uh, don't be shy. Hop on in. Okay, I just sent you a new background because you definitely can't see it all, and it's cut off, so... Okay, I'll be right back. Try again. We we know that, but uh, is that the new one? Nope. Here it is. There we go. <clears throat> there. Hey, all right. See it all. There we go. <laughs> yes, we know how to edit on the fly. <laughs> Thank you, Chelsea. <clears throat> um, Hi. Anyone's it isn't anyone's burden to disprove the existence of a god. It's the burden of those who make the claim. Well, it sounds to me like you've taken basic logic theory. <laughs> yes, <laughs> I agree with you. But you would be astonished how many people don't understand that. They just, they, they don't get it. And that's why I like to talk about it. It's an opportunity to educate. Oh, we have a guest coming in. <clears throat> Hello? Hi, welcome. What's on your mind? Um, I have a question. Do you believe in God? I have yet to see sufficient evidence to warrant a belief in any gods. Do you believe that the lack of evidence is evidence of non-existence? Evidence of non-existence. Not necessarily. No, we don't want to fall into the black swan fallacy. I have no way of disproving leprechauns' existence, so I will continue to not believe in leprechauns until there's sufficient evidence to warrant my belief in leprechauns. Are you an empiricist? Um, basically, but I'm also open to um, spiritual awakenings and understandings, enlightenment, but I think everything is basically a... It's bound by the physical properties of the universe. So, essentially, you're, by definition, an empiricist. But, yeah, I, all right, I anyways, suppose. Anyways, um, do you, do you, as an empiricist yourself, do you have any evidence that empiricism is the only way to find objective truth? Objective truth? I think, I think you have to be bound by the, the, the universe <clears throat> if you're going to find truth within that universe yeah all right so so what's your evidence for um that only you can only um get to objective truth 
through, you know, physical properties of the universe. Well, can you give me an example of a, a non-objective truth that is not bound by the physical properties of the universe? Well, I don't really want to get into relativistic truth. Hmm. I mean, I don't personally, I don't believe in relativism, so. Um, they're still saying the background is cut off. It wasn't for me, but I refixed, so. Also, do, okay. you, do you accept logical arguments? Yes, I, I uh, appreciate logical arguments. I'll be right back. I'm just going to change the background, but I can still hear you. Okay. All right. So, um, so I, I specifically want to talk about God first, because God, people define God in sorts of different ways, in many different ways. And I think the word God is... <coughs> ambiguous so i want to start off first by defining what god is before we get into an actual discussion that's a good place to start all right so how i would define god is a being who is not bounded by the physical properties of the universe so that that's how, how that's how okay I would, but that's how how, I would define how is how is a being existing that's outside of the physical properties of the universe well that, that's what that's what I'm gonna, I'm gonna get into that's why i said do you accept logical arguments so i can instead of you know giving you evidence because like like you, you're an empiricist so you you want something that's you know empirical that can be you know repeated tested multiple a countless amount of times basically so i i want to you know approach it differently instead of giving you you know actual evidence like physical evidence Instead, I can give you a logical argument for the existence of God. Right, but okay. logically, for us, we've we've gone through that practice multiple times. So, if I could just ask you a question, do you yeah, agree that go all ahead. of do you agree that all of space and time is inside of our universe? Yes. How how the universe is defined as the totality of everything. So, how is there something outside of that? Like I said, um, when before I told you I would get into this to this discussion, I define God, and um, if if you want me to give you a more you know um, right. a Quick better question. definition can... with more clarity, I don't mind giving you a better definition with more clarity. Yeah, so how, can the laws of logic apply outside of the universe? Well, the laws of logic is a uh, um, descriptive. It, it's a descriptive thing, so. I would say so. But how okay, but I don't. they're outside of our universe? All right, so um, when, when arguing God, if, if God has, if God abides by the law of identity, which is the law of non-contradiction, what, what is the issue there? You're trying to tell us that there's something outside of our universe that is still applying to the rules inside of our universe. Yes, and if I can give you right, an but there's argument... Nothing, there is nothing saying that the, the laws continue to work outside of this universe. We have absolutely no proof of that. Yeah, so, yeah, right, so but, here, right, you're, arguing, you're arguing from a, an empiricist perspective. That, right, that just, but you're, what... you're arguing from a point of view where you already believe that God exists. From... Are you a presuppositionalist? No, I'm not. No, I'm not. I'm giving you an, a logical argument for the possibility of a God. I haven't I haven't straightforwardly said that God exists. I'm giving you a logical argument for the possibility of this type of being. I, I, I hear you. And I'm not saying that it's impossible that a God exists. I am an agnostic on that on that stance. You know, I yes, it is possible that there is a God, but to use logic like the law of identity, law of excluded middle, law of non-contradiction, those laws are bound within our data set, our universe. We, everything that exists in logic, uh, empirical reality, you can't use that to demonstrate how a god could exist outside of the bounds of our universe. 
It's just, it's like saying, well, what happens before the Big Bang? Well, what happens before? The word before implies time. And when time equals zero or a negative property, then it's, it's, it's just irrelevant. It doesn't make any sense. Well, like I said, um, the laws of logic is, um, first of all, the laws of logic is um, descriptive. It, it, it's, it doesn't have to be bounded by its respective system. That, that's what I, I would personally say that. Is it useful, though? Is it useful to try to use the laws of logic to say it's possible that a god exists? What utility is there? So if so would you like like um deductive reasoning would would you accept deductive reasoning for the existence of god No Why not Why would you accept deductive reasoning for the existence of god Because if it abides and it doesn't contradict the law of identity which is the law of non-contradiction what seems to be the issue there Because you could do the same, you could do the same thing with Santa Claus, unicorns. Like, yeah, but I yeah, can, it doesn't, I can, I, it, it problem, doesn't prove anything. The problem is I can point the contradiction within those claims that leprechauns and unicorns exist. Because if if you go to the Oxford Dictionary, the definition of um a unicorn would be a mythological, you know, creature. What and what does mythological mean? Myth and if mythological you go the something that is. You can look up God, and it is a mythological ancient deity. All right, go ahead. Um, search up the definition of God, and 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 like I said, that's the broad definition of God. That that's something that is broad. That's the general usage of the definition. But I gave you my definition of God. But like I said, the word God is ambiguous. So many people define God differently. So, like I said, before we get before we got into this um this discussion, I define what God is, and if God, how I define God, and if if it's abiding by the laws of logic, the law of identity, the law of non contradiction, what seems to be the issue? Because God is such a broad term. And when you take the word like God and you loop in every other God, which takes in Hanuman, the monkey God, or like the ancient Egyptian gods, now you have looped in every single God that has ever existed ever and said that it's not, it's not useful to try and prove something that you have to group everything in. If you're trying to prove that there is something outside this universe then great but to put a label like god on it now takes you through all of the tragedy and horror that comes with the book all right so i, I want to go into more depth so um so the big bang right the big bang is the expansion of the universe right yeah so Um, in order to have an expansion, there has to be something that is going to expand the expansion, which I would say in this instance would be th like the being God, God, which caused the expansion, caused the, you know, rapid expansion of the universe. That's cute. I identify this pen as God, and I can show you that this pen exists, therefore God exists, but that's but, not useful, but the is problem, it? But the problem is that pen is bounded by the you know, physical properties of the universe. All right, well, the universe contains all of space, time, and matter, and energy that we observe, that we can possibly observe. What's I'm sorry, outside can you of... repeat that? You, you yeah, cut well, out on my end. So the, the universe is the expansion of space, time matter, energy, and every other property that comprises our reality, our universe. As that expands, yes, the, the space-time is expanding, but what does it expand into? We don't really know. Uh, we can't observe it. We can't really measure it. I'm not a physicist. I'm not going to pretend to know. Um, but just to, to arbitrarily say, well, that's God, it's useless. That's that, like right, Chelsea so. was just saying, when you use the word G-O-D, God, you are smuggling in all of the baggage from everybody else's definition of God. You're simultaneously claiming that Hanuman, Shiva, Vishnu, Ra, Yahweh, Zeus, Thor, all of the gods, the problem all of is the gods. With, with those gods that you have stated, 
they they don't abide by the law of non contradiction. And and hold on, I'm, I have but a now rebuttal. That's the, yeah, right, but that's now the uh, no true Scotsman fallacy. Why, you see, like you're you're arguing, your you're learning. arguing from you're arguing from a empiricist perspective. Like you want something that is empirical, something that is repeatable, testable, a countless amount of times. Like like I said, the question I asked you at the beginning: Can you give any evidence that empiricism is the only way to get into objective truth? You you still haven't provided me any evidence for um, how empiricism is the only way. Well, so, empiricism so has to do with the natural properties of our universe. And if you if you want to propose something that is outside of the natural properties of our universe, then you're talking about a supernatural thing. And if you want to demonstrate how that supernatural thing exists, well, you can't really use empiricism, then can you? So then you resort to logic. And logic, as well as we understand it, applies to the properties of the universe. So you're trying to apply the properties of the universe and logic theory to a supernatural idea or concept. That's the problem. Um, logic exe um, exists independently from the, from the laws of the universe. How do you know that? It exists within our minds, which is something abstract. Which, which is dependent. No, our minds are dependent on the physical properties of the universe. Or yes, are they logic, not? Yes, but logic within itself is abstract. You, you, can't, find, you, can't, find any <laughs> you can't find any dimension in the universe that has logic, right? You just it's don't a, see it. You, you don't see your logical contradiction. Created, right? Yes, and you are, I don't know if you're intentionally just skipping over this logical contradiction or if you genuinely don't see it. Wait, what's the logical contradiction? You're, you're trying to say that you were using the laws of logic, which are somehow greater than the physical properties of our universe as a concept. And then I say, well, it's, it's physically bound by the properties of the physical universe, because without human minds, our logic theory wouldn't exist. So our logic theory is, by definition, dependent on the physical properties of the universe. Therefore, our brains are the reason why logic works at all. You don't, you don't see too many dolphins talking about the ex laws of excluded middle, right? You don't see too many chimpanzees writing... Um, algebra equations, right? These are, yes, these are concepts, but they are physically bound by the properties of our physical brain in the physical universe. And just because it's an abstract idea doesn't mean that they can apply to something supernatural. Okay, I understand what you're saying. So now I, I have a rebuttal for this, okay? So yes, um, yes, logic is an abstract idea. Yes, our, our, our brain and our thoughts are dependent on the physical laws of the universe. However, we can use logic, um, even even outside like the limitations of our universe to to prove things. No, nope, he's missing it. Yeah, that's yeah you, you just missed it again. With, you just missed the whole point. My to guy. prove things within the respective system, because like I said, logic is is descriptive. Right, but uh, it's only inside of our universe. You're missing the big giant gap that you can't go outside of our universe with logic. We don't know what's out there. It cannot be existent. To say that you know exactly how it works out there is false. We do not know. Which is why I gave you the example of asking the question, well, what happens before the Big Bang? Before is irrelevant because it's dependent on time. Once you start using time to measure things before time existed, your whole model breaks down. So you're trying to use properties of logic which are bound within the physical universe that we can observe and test and manipulate to something outside of our physical properties of the universe. So again, Try to use your same argumentation to make it more likely that Santa Claus exists or leprechauns exist or the Loch Ness Monster is outside of the bounds of the universe, right? Once you put it in abstract terms like that, you see the flaw of your argument. Now, I asked you if you are a presuppositionalist and you said no, but it sounds to me like you are. You're trying to logic God into existence. But that's well, just, it's useless. If, if, if it's you're, meaningless. If you're going to label me as a presupp um, presuppositionist, then wouldn't an empiricist be the same thing too? Because you think empiricism is the only way to get to objective truth. So oh, you're, I'll t you're I'll, presupposing I'll empiric yeah. um, empiricism. 
I will freely admit and repeat for everyone what my presuppositions are. Presupposition one is the universe contains all of our reality. Our reality is contained by the universe. Presupposition two is that we exist in that universe and we have the ability to observe and manipulate that universe to a limited degree. Those are my presuppositions. So we are bound by the laws of logic and the universe, the physical properties of space and time and matter, and, and those are my precepts. Now, if you want to try to use logic, which is bound by the physical properties of the universe, to demonstrate the likely existence of a supernatural god of some kind, well, there's your, there's your problem. That's, that's the part that you cannot get to. Logic can be applied to abstract ideas. Logic is just reasoning conducted or assessed according to strict principles yeah. of validity. That, right. That's and all it's logic a, is. It can, right. it's logic a cute can be applied to abstract it's ideas too. It is a cute mind experiment. It is a cute thought experiment. But it still doesn't get you to the part where you cannot use logic outside of our universe. It Do you want me to a... give you an example of how logic can be applied to an abstract idea? <laughs> nope. I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give Nils an opportunity to, Hi, Nils, try, to try to pr try to show where my flaws and my logic are wrong or where he might have something to say on what you're trying to demonstrate. Hi, Nils. Welcome to the chat. Yeah. So what you're kind of, I don't know if you mentioned this already, but you should have probably mentioned Occam's razor at some point, mm. which is this idea that we're trying to make as few presuppositions as we need to, um, to describe the universe. So we make very few presuppositions and then see using um, <clears throat> testing and experiment to see if our uh, action matches with our guess, right? Like if I have a hypothesis, I drop my phone, I almost dropped my phone, which I'm holding, which would have been a bad idea. Um, on Are you the in ground. the bathtub right now? <laughs> uh, if I drop my phone, it'll fall to the ground, right? Yeah. Um, and so I can test that. And so I say, I let go of my phone. And then it falls to the ground. And I'm like, okay, that confirms it. So I get some sort of strength in this sub presupposition, right? Like this makes sense because it actually, <laughs> this presupposition makes sense because it actually predicts something about the real world, right? And that's, I think, the step you're missing, where it's like, All right, so, okay, you've um, made this presupposition. Why is it necessary to the prediction of how the real world works? All right, Does so here we sense? go. Um, so once again, you're arguing from an empiricist perspective. And one, one way you're invalidating my logical argument is because you're pointing out my presupposition. But I also point out how it, from an empiricist perspective, they also have the presuppositions that you're pointing out to invalidate my logical argument. So just because something is a presupposition, that doesn't necessarily invalidate an argument. Well, you let's apply that, Occam's right? razor. Well, let's let's so let's apply True, Occam's that's razor. That's we pulled in Occam's razor. Yeah. Now, uh, if if you're you need the least presuppositions to explain a phenomena, right? Um, so what we no. do now is we say, let's go for a phenomena. Let's say um, the creation of the world or the creation of the universe. We can presuppose some sort of prime entity because maybe the universe had to start from somewhere. That's probably reasonable, but that's probably it. We can't really assume that this prime entity has a consciousness, cares about people or anything else really. Right. All right so Nils, Nils, I, I, I want to go into more depth. So, um, so the, the Big Bang refers to the rapid expansion of the universe. We can all agree upon that, right? It's a it's a scientific fact that's yeah, been Big proven, Bang, yeah, right? right? Yeah. So um in order for um the universe to have its expansion, what caused it to expand in the first place? We don't know. No, do no. You yeah, believe, we don't know. Do you, do you believe that the universe is independent? Um, independent from be what an open system or a closed system do you believe that the universe is a necessary <coughs> necessity of reality our reality I yes it, but... honestly i don't all right so you like believe that. the universe is necessary you... do you think you know 
Do you know the answers? Huh? Do you have the answers to these questions? That's why I told you, would you accept a de um, deductive reasoning as logical proof no. of the existence of God? And I told you, no, <laughs> I don't I think would, it's but reasonable. Even deductive reason I, I actually, I personally would, but even deductive reasoning, as long as you use Occam's razor, doesn't presuppose a God that at least cares about us or thinks about us. None of the, the, the uh, theologies are right with this God. It's just basically a, like, that's, a natural force. That's what I'm trying to do. I'm trying to get into the deductive reasoning. So that's why I ask you, do you believe that the universe is necessary? Meaning that it's, you know, a brute necessity of our reality. So do you believe right, that? Yes or no? Do you believe that the universe is independent? It's not, it's, it's self-contingent. Do you believe that? So I think personally that the universe is a natural process that continues over and over and over again. Like the Big Bang started from everything started sucked in and at the end of uh, another universe's uh, energy death, another universe began. To think that there is a prime mover or a god or something outside of that is so many like mental gymnastics to get into thinking that there is an outside force that would even remotely care or have any kind of control is to think so much higher of ourselves. To think that there is something that cares about us like we're an experiment. Like it might make us feel comfortable that there's a prime over, but it's much more likely that the universe is a natural process. Okay, so what the last things that you said is irrelevant. It's not it doesn't necessarily pertain to your argument. So what you basically said is that um, you you basically said in another words that the universe is necessary. You believe that the universe is a natural process. Is that How correct? How is it not necessary for the argument? All right. So in so you believe no, the universe is we're necessary. Using, we're, we're mincing words here. We need to be we need to define very clearly what necessary means in this context. Necessary as in. And you can't use necessary again to define it. Like, do you mean necessary as in this had to exist? Or do you mean, like, do you believe, like what do you, do you mean believe in it? determinism? Do you believe that the universe uh, is deterministic? Super determinism or regular determinism? Wait, repeat okay, that. I'm, I'm this sorry. I'm having really bad that's... reception. Okay, what was sorry. That? It's just when you say words like determinism... Um, there's Deep determinism, Ryan. which is you don't have cho like a powerful, or you don't have um, control over your actions. I mean that by 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 determinism, I mean that every single action is determined due to a prior cause. Do you believe that? Yes or no? That's called super determinism, and I don't know. <laughs> determinism as like we are all abiding the laws of physics, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But that's and, that thing is hold called on, super hold determinism hold on, hold on. and we I'm actually get, don't I'm getting know to in my physics. point. I'm, I'm I'm getting to my point. We all abide by the laws of physics, right? <clears throat> Do yes. you think I have And I we have can't a... wait, hold on, hold on. So. We can't control the laws of physics. So we are you know, embodying the laws of physics. We can't control the laws of physics. We can't control the mechanisms in our brains which tells us to do certain actions and tells us not to do certain actions. That's what I mean by the form of determinism, that everything is deterministic. Everything has already been determined by the laws of physics. Okay, but how do okay, you get so like to game. God from that? Okay, I have one final question, and then I promise I'm, I'm, I'm gonna getting let... to like oh. I'm like I said, I'm going through the process of deductive reasoning. I'm trying to I'm trying to get your um your yes, belief. I, well, Brian, let's can talk I ask about you a question. Yeah, go for it. So, if the word of God had never been spread, and let's say that we we're still worshiping Ra, and God had never been mentioned, and it had always been Ra. And that had been the word that had spread across the world and everybody was still worshiping God as Ra and no one had ever heard the words G-O-D. Would we still be debating whether or not G-O-D was the creator of the universe or would the entire universe be created by Ra? Yeah. 
Language matters, doesn't it? And we're getting well, stuck in the weeds. Hold on. You're, you're just we're, relabeling we're, a terminology. We're, no, we're getting so Ra never claimed to create the universe. And we're getting so bogged down in the just weeds. Just because you can't I was conceptualize just bring up, something, that doesn't mean it doesn't exist. I was going to bring up yeah, the I'm puddle sorry, you analogy. You brought me up to make it simpler. <laughs> I know. It was my mistake. So a puddle is... Yeah, you were like, a I puddle. The, oh, sorry. Yeah. the puddle. The puddle is... Um, the hole is necessary for a puddle to exist. And the water is necessary for the puddle to exist. But just because the puddle perfectly fits the hole, the water perfectly fits the hole and becomes a puddle, doesn't mean that uh, where was I going with this? <laughs> that God designs the hole in the puddle, right? The universe is an emergent property of space and time and matter and everything that it's made up of. And if you want to try to use the, the philosophical laws of logic, you know, the, the, con the concepts of logic or mathematics to somehow um, demonstrate how <laughs> through... Uh, what was it, deductive reasoning that God, a creator God exists? I just, I can't get there from here. We're going to, well, I'm going to continue to using, practice what's Occam's reasoning. What's wrong with reason using the laws of logic and philosophical principles? Because science, like scientists <sighs> use philosophical principles to get to yes. objective wait, wait, wait. truth. Can I just so, ask you a quick question? Which God do you believe in? Huh? Um, I'm Muslim. I believe in the Which um, God do you Islamic in? God. Okay, here is the problem. The Islamic God can be disproven by this. A deist God can't because a deist God is an unfalsifiable claim. You're just saying tautologically right, so there is a can you, God that exists. Can you disprove the Islamic exists. God, please? Uh, yes, the book has been yeah, do you think the moon was split in two? several different times. That's incorrect. Actually, yeah. the Quran... The Quran um, actually, yeah, it's actually. In, it's the Quran original, is actually pretty well on. preserved. Wait, wait. The yeah, the Quran no, was yeah, no. yeah. It's been really well preserved, no, and it's in it's in the original Arabic not language. Not perfectly, but nope. better than most, I think. No, oh, no. The than, Quran is better than in the most. original Arabic language. Within, it has never been mistranslated. It has never been altered. None of that. To believe that is to be ignorant. To think that being able to translate something differently to get a completely separate meaning of what ancient Arabic used to mean in today's world that controls people in a different light is ignorance. Things have been perfectly preserved. You are correct. But being able to translate it and say that it means something differently to change how people look at things or treat people is in fact altering the word. Yeah, All right, so like, the um, problem isn't the book on, wait, or wait, the wait, translation; let me it's the to people that. Let me, interpreting. Let me respond it. to what she just said. So let's oh, yeah, say I'm just let, clarifying it. Let's say hypothetically, right? Hypothetically speaking, the Quran was altered, yeah. right? Let's say you know, like the the whole entire book of the Quran was altered by a lot, right? That's still even even when the Quran was altered in this hypothetical, that still doesn't disprove the existence of the Islamic God. It it doesn't. That just that. means but that just means okay, okay. that but just means can... there's an alteration well, of the scripture. That's all it means. <laughs> it's okay. I got. I, I can actually do this pretty quick because I used to be Muslim. Um. So okay, let's start. Make first of all, we got to define proof. By proof, we assume we mean something like the same way we can prove the earth is round, right? You can probably agree with me, we can prove the earth is round, right? Yeah, I mean, I there, yeah, there's a difference between proof and evidence, yeah. Okay, but we can prove the earth is round the same way we can prove the Islamic God doesn't exist, right? Yeah. But I'm waiting for you to disprove yeah, so we can get a, uh, yeah, okay, then I, I just want to get that down first so we can continue. Um, next thing is, do you believe the earth, moon was split in two? Huh? In the Quran, it says that the moon, or a very popular interpretation of the Quran that many Muslims believe, is that the moon was split in two <laughs> as a miracle done by Allah. That, that's, a, that's a misinterpretation. Oh! So Islamic scholars... 
you, you can look at the consensus through the Islamic scholars. Right, um, but this is this is what wait, I this is what allow, I'm allow me about. to speak. I allow oh, right, you to but, speak. Please allow me to speak. Please. So so there's a there's a consensus but, and translate differently is the point that I was trying to make. Scholars being able to yeah, change that's, the original he, I, word is what I'm talking about. No, it's just people misinterpreting the original what word the verse the actually same. refers it's, to. But allow me to speak. Wait, wait, just but here's just allow me to speak, please. But could could you Okay, fine. Yeah. There is a consensus through the um through Islamic scholars that that verse specifically refers to the rusting and the oxidate um the oxidization of the moon which nasa has proved pr nasa have has no. proved that the moon is currently oxidizing how with what oxygen what do, do you realize that there there yeah i would agree with you there's not a, there's not a lot of oxygen on there's the moon no, oxygen. no there is oxygen on the moon there is there might be a little bit yeah sure yes, so chemical processes happen but from my understanding, 1%. the language is the hour of judgment is nigh and the moon is cleft asunder. But if they see a sign, they turn away and say, this is but transient magic. Yes, yes, I, I understand the Hadith, the Hadith does says the moon, the moon splits, but that is a prophecy that is currently being fulfilled. That and NASA, sperm. wait, wait, hold what on, hold sperm? on, hold on. Sperm. NASA has already proved that the moon is currently oxidizing and rusting. You, you can See, search this up. Um, this, NASA has proved this. Wait, I thought, okay, wait, wait. I'm, I think I'm, I don't know if I was raised in a different mosques, sect of mosques or whatever. Um, but when I heard that, it was like, oh, he split the moon. Other people, like, I, and this was uh, one in Bangladesh, so I don't know. Um, how authentic you want it. But they were like, oh, he split the moon, other people talked about it, and then he put the moon back together to show the power of Allah. That's what, like, was taught. So, like, I don't, I don't know if you maybe don't believe that, but a lot of Muslims believe that. So, maybe you're a different kind of Muslim. So, what, what kind of stuff do you believe in the Quran, and what kind of stuff do you not? It's irrelevant. It's irrelevant what the other Muslims. I'm I'm going specifically through Islamic scholars, and and I'm following what the Islamic scholars, people who have theology degrees that have been studying Islam for decades. That's what do I'm going off of. I don't do care. It's irrelevant what the other bias Muslims. With Muslim scholars, huh? Do you think there's a chance of confirmation bias with Muslim scholars? What do you mean by, can you define confirmation bias? Yeah. So if all of those Muslim scholars believe in God and they want to prove the existence of God, then they're going to cherry pick, they're going to use confirmation bias to examine or, or use all of the um, supporting bits of evidence while dismissing and ignoring the evidence that disproves the claim that their God exists. I That's believe confirmation some, bias. I believe some Islamic scholars do that, but I'm talking about the overall consensus of Islamic scholars. That's how they interpret it, and that's how... All right, let, let me put it this way. I will admit that because the Quran is one of the youngest holy books, it has all of the advantage of the history of the scientific endeavors, and, and it uses flowery poetic, flowery poetic language to illustrate some natural processes of our natural world. But that's not impressive. That, in fact, is the opposite of impressive. It means some people were paying attention, and they wrote it down, and then they decided, well, this is just evidence that uh, Muhammad exists, or the Islamic God is the right God. Out of all the thousands and thousands of other gods, our book happens to be well-preserved, granted, but not perfectly preserved, and it contains a lot of true claims. But the... But the you have to admit that the flowery language, like uh, splitting the moon asunder, or where does the sun go at night? It goes and prostrates beneath the throne, then it asks for permission to rise, and permission is granted. I mean, this is just crap. This is, this is nonsense, and you're using it to support your God claims, right? This, this is like, I read the Bhagavad Gita. It's poetic. Yeah. Oh, it's beautifully written. Right, I can I, I read don't... I can read the Bhagavad Gita and use that to prove that Brahman is the creator god. Does it make it true? Basically. No, the answer is no. 
because you can't use a book to prove the book. You're trying to use claims to prove the claims. That's a circular logic fallacy, right? Just because, yes, some of the claims are true, you have to take the very obviously demonstrably false claims, claims like the and blood say clot. this, right. The blood clot and the sperm, and like, you could go on and on with the missing scientific pieces that for a long time people took as fact, but they were wrong. Okay. And then we get into the most important oh, question. Oh. Do you presuppose? And you have demonstrated that you do. You have confirmation bias. You are trying to prove your God exists through very faulty uh, logic, concepts, and evidence. Evidence that doesn't exist. Um, Hose, um, I have to go right now. I'll, I'll, can we continue this conversation some other yes. time? Yes. Thank you for joining and sharing your thoughts. Yep. I followed you. Um, I, I'm, I'll do this later on. Are you going to be on later on today? Uh, possibly, but probably not for too much later. But I'm, I'm on pretty regularly. So oh, what, uh, do, We have what, to return to do, space to feed the... What I try to do is I try to use logical you know, proof. I try to use deductive reasoning. You didn't accept that. So what I decided to do is go to the Quran and give... I was trying to give you prophecies and um, essentially scientific facts that were in the Quran yeah. before they but, were discovered. I know. I know. It's we okay. Know, Try again next time. Can I give you a hint just for next time? Um, for next time, deduct. you can use deduction in Occam's Razor to get you to a deist god, but once, but that god is different from the god of the Quran. These are two different beings. That's not Allah. So if you want to prove what you believe in, you want to try and prove Allah, you have to start talking about the claims in the Quran and try and prove those. Okay, you I'll, can't I'll just be like, oh, well, deductively, there's probably some god being. Because I could say, okay, there is. It's Zeus. It's a space giraffe. It's uh, uh, Joe Biden in a Mecca, in a Gundam, for whoa, some reason. Because that's whoa. just... Yeah, but that doesn't I, get you anywhere, because I, don't I, know. I can show you how they contradict the um, the law of identity. But I, I don't have much time, but I really... No, 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 no. You can think... You can No, no, no. They don't. Definitely think you can create one. a god... That doesn't. Yeah, you can. It's a philosophical practice that a lot of people have done. That's just like a fun thing. But and also, I can, sorry, I should let you I go. I can use a logical argument of of you creating that God and how it hasn't, how the God hasn't been preserved through historical documents for decades, even a century, thirteen hundred years. Yeah, but that's not deductive. Yeah. That's starting to be like inductive stuff now, right? And now we're starting to talk shift towards like. Okay, now we're shifting towards <laughs> gods of, like, religion and theism, right? And I feel like I don't want to keep you going. You can go. We can talk about this later, my guy. Here, I'll follow you, too, actually. But oh, okay. I'm, I'm I'll, I'll give you a follow as well. This you know conversation what? later. I just really got to go right now. Yeah. Yeah, it's all good. I, I follow everyone back. Have so a... everyone that follows me, give me a little time. I'll follow you back. Um, all right, and, take yeah, care. Yeah, be well. Thanks for the the lively conversation. Yeah, that's the thing that I it has kind of been irking me recently is I feel like a lot of Muslims have been like, and it's like, dude, I don't I don't understand why you have to play this like weird switch up game to like trick people into Islam. It's like it's a pretty religion. If you think the religion is nice, like my parents, they love Islam. They think it's a great religion, so they're just like, yeah. If you want to be part of the religion, let me tell you about it. We get to pray. We get It feels so nice to pray and meditate together as a family and blah, blah. And I'm like, oh, my God. Just preach this shit. It's so nice. Yeah. Yeah. That's why I like... like good um, parts of religion. Yeah, that's why I like Eastern religion. You know, meditating is a useful thing to do. I don't believe in worship. I don't think it's useful in any way. Um, I don't think praying gets us anywhere. I mean, we can put good vibes into the ether or whatever. You know, if, if you're smiling, if you're happy all the time, then you're going to be a happy person, generally. Not always, but yeah, it's, it's, it's the difference between ideology and practicing good, healthy behavior, right? Yeah. And I think, funny enough, like, Islam, because it's like a couple hundred years ahead of other religions, um... They kind of were like, hey, let's steal some of this. Like, oh, pray five, uh, meditation, more like pray five times a day. Haha, <laughs> get it? And like stuff <laughs> yeah. like that. And like, 
And it's just like, oh my god, of course. And why it is it like, 72? Why is it 72 versions and not 69 or 105 or two? <laughs> right? Is this <laughs> is this actually, a bunch of is a bunch of dudes sitting that's around? Not on the uh, that's actually a poorly cited hadith, but that's still okay. funny as hell to me. That and I think it was supposed to be like 72 grapes in some translations, like virgin <laughs> yeah. grapes. And I'm like, what, what are grapes a luxury item or something? Right. Oh, what comedian was talking about that? He was talking about the translation error, and he goes to heaven, and he's handed a bunch of grapes, and he's like, what the hell is this? <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. Uh, True. I don't get it. I don't get it. It's, yeah. It all I've, comes down to presupposition I, and trying to fit a square I, peg in a I round hole. I just feel like it's... Oh, sorry. Nah, that's, 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 yeah, I just feel like it's disingenuous when you're trying to spread the religion because it feels like it's like, I don't know, it's like, hey, dude, just the religion is cool on its own. Just preach it. Just show yeah. people like Eid or Ramadan or something. Oh, yeah, actually, I, just show people like Eid. Yes. People will freaking love that shit. What is it? Eid? Yeah, like at the end of Ramadan. It's like, oh. everyone Can you describe like, it yo, first? let's go to each other's house and just... Uh, basically, um, I hate it, but I'm pretty sure everyone else loves it. <laughs> but it's like, but that's because I'm antisocial. Uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> but it's like this huge social thing where like, it's like the end of Ramadan, finished fasting, everyone is like, thank God we can eat while the sun's up again. Everyone starts eating and like going to other people's houses to eat. And like, everyone's like, it's basically like, if everyone like cooking food and going to different people's houses and like trying to like be in like this big community and everyone like prays once at like mosque in the morning or at like the evening or whatever and it's like it's just like a huge like community thing where like all mm. like if you're part of a specific like a muslim community in your city you'll just like everyone will basically like get together and they'll start like <laughs> you'll just start hugging random people with that Eid Mubarak had, where you like hug them and then you like put your head on their right shoulder, then you hug them again on head on the left shoulder, hug them again head on the right shoulder, and then you like it, it's great anyway. <laughs> I'll take your word for it. <laughs> that sounds too much yeah. like church to me. It, it's the awful. culture of it is nice. Yeah, I'm not a germaphobe, but well, I don't it, like it's... touching people that much. <laughs> it's just uh... yeah. That's why I say it's like. That's why I say it's an antisocial thing. Like, I'm an antisocial, so I'm like, I don't like it. I like the food part, because people eat yeah. good food. Right. Yeah, I, that I get. That I that, understand. I'm like... Hey, yeah. Brian. Yeah. I sent you a baby Luna. Oh. True, it is like Easter after Lent. Um, I attribute to like after celebrations like that, like the food is great and the getting together and the communion of all. Do you love it? Oh my God! People are going to I know start crying. She's beautiful. Oh, <laughs> oh! Is that AI generated? Uh-huh. I'm scared now. Everything I'm scared to see is AI generated, man. I love her. <laughs> um, I do have a new Lisa, but do you hear me? About what? Sorry, I have. I do you have, have a new Lisa, Lisa, but I don't know what format she's in. Hold on. Oh. Ah. I'm wearing fleece pants, like PJ pants, and I've got a splinter in it somewhere, and I've been trying to find it, and it's impossible. I vow to my space god, Lisa, the giraffe, the rainbow Uh, giraffe. Leave me upon her. This is Luna, her daughter. Oh. I'm glad you know. Remember the baby with the little mohawk? I made everybody vote. Where do I sign up?
Um, I do think that I'm going <gasps> to... I'm so happy with this one. I know. I think you're right. I think it's time. You won't, So where do you sign up? You Fortunately, with Lisaism, you only have to uh, pray three and a half times a day. So it's already instantly easier um, than some religions. Uh, and... Don't forget to eat your leafy greens. <laughs> That's pretty much it. <laughs> and prayer is actually just uh, eating a meal. So that's why it's three and a half. Three meals and a snack. <laughs> uh, yeah, yes. three meals All and a greens, snack. Our greens are uh, considered sacred and holy, Talisa. Everything green. Everything. Okay, we're taking this too far. <laughs> It said in the book of necks. <laughs> <laughs> All right, pop quiz. What mammal has more bones in its neck? A mouse, a human, or a giraffe? To Does the anybody comments. know? To the comments. All right, pop quiz. What mammal has more bones in its neck? The human, the mouse, or the giraffe? Oh, come on, guys. Come on. Um... I don't believe in necks. <laughs> <laughs> Some people don't have them. Have you ever seen a dog without a neck? Don't you dare go to Google. Have you ever seen a dog without a neck? Uh, I've seen, like, um, pit bulls and stuff that appear to have no No, 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 no. no. no there is a genetic condition where dogs are born without necks. So, no, I've never seen oh, that. Hold on, hold all right, last chance, everyone, quick. Get your answers in. Yep. Five seconds. <laughs> we should do another trivia night. I, I think that's a good idea. I think so, too. All right, the answer to the pop quiz a math is... math trivia night. A math, no. I don't Ew. want to lose followers. Oh. Ew. <laughs> so the answer is uh, they all have the same amount of vertebrae in their necks. Uh, all mammals share the same number. The giraffe's vertebrae just happen to be extra long, and, and the gigantical. mouse happens to be really, really small, but the same number. But that's not true universally. Sometimes there are genetic um, mistakes. We could call them uh, errors in the genetic code that gives people an extra vertebrae in their neck. <clears throat> yeah, nice to know. You're now you're equipped for trivia night. <laughs> a hiccup. Yeah, pretty okay, much. I was scared because I remember it was like I heard a documentary once, and it's like usually the giraffe's neck has blah 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 and blah or blah 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 vertebrae, and I'm like, what? There's a difference. There's a variation sometimes. Yeah. And that's why I was like, I have no clue if they have more or less than humans. All I know is they have, like, a number. Yeah, and, and our total number of vertebrae change over our lifetime. When we're born, our coccyx, our tailbone, is made up of, I, would, I don't remember what it is, four vertebrae. And then as we grow older, they fuse together to create one solid vertebrae. Or they don't. Hmm. Um, to be clear, Man. this is not photoshopped. This is a real medical condition that some dogs have. Um, a lot of times people freak out and they're like, oh, it's photoshopped. This is not a photoshopped thing. You can look this up for yourself. I've actually, I'm an animal nutritionist. I've met a dog that has this condition. Um, he is the cutest boy ever. But um, they do have <laughs> lots of problems. They have, they do. They have lots of problems. It's really sad. Um <laughs> No, but generally, that makes me sad now. That's gen disturbing. <laughs> I know. Generally, they do live a semi-normal life, but uh, it's just not generally as long. Yep. All right, we're down to thirty-seven dog. followers. <laughs> Is the picture there? Is what picture? You didn't show the picture. I did. I showed the dog with no neck. I wanted oh, I to get. Can't... I can't see it. <laughs> there, 
See it? I laughed and then I got depression after you described its health problems. That's why I can't I can't find pugs cute because every time I look at a pug, I'm like, oh god, it's that's you how I, poor creature. That's how yeah. I feel about bulldogs. Yeah. Yeah, I bet there's a dog like that on TikTok somewhere. The people that have them end up being like really famous on the internet. Oh, I saw this beautiful cat the other day. I think I sent it to Brian. He has some kind of eye condition, and one of his eyes is like black on the outside. It's really cool. No, I don't think you did send that to me. I totally did, I thought. I think I saved it. I'll go back. A baby hippo. <laughs> yeah. Baby, baby hippos might be the most adorable creature ever. A lot of people say sloth, but uh uh-uh, I think that's an ugly... (laughs) I think sloths are pretty hideous. (laughs) I know, I'm weird. But uh, yeah, baby hippos are pretty adorable. Baby snakes, tiny little uh, murder uh, rope. (laughs) Danger rope, yes. I was just going to say, I believe the correct term is a nope rope. A nope rope. (laughs) Oh... Uh, I can't. I can't remember who did the skit, but they were, they were playing the part of God, right? And and um, talking to the angel, and the angel's like, "All right, here's a new creature, a spider. What are the properties of the spider?" And God is like, "Butt rope, <laughs> butt rope, butt rope, and eight legs." Okay, we got butt rope and eight legs. And a million eyes. <laughs> nope, Roper. Man, I'm just thinking about. I was on another live, and he was talking about like, um, like he he seemed to be some sort of expert in like dinosaurs and like that sort of time era. And I remember hearing this fact, and I was hoping. For dear God, he would be like, I'm like, this guy is probably an expert. Just tell me this fact's wrong, please, for my, for my mental. And then I asked, were the bugs really twice the size because they had higher oxygen concentration? Yep. And there he was like, oh, yeah, some bugs were even as big as cars. Way like bigger than millipedes twice the size, my and guy. centipedes. Way bigger. Yeah. Way bigger. And now I'm like, bigger. dear God. Sometimes you you're like maybe I can maybe you should I this isn't a good source but you know I'll take anything to disprove this cuz I don't like it and then it was like nope it's real <laughs> it's too real <laughs> yeah Yeah I I so wish I went into archaeology as a profession I know there's basically no money in it but I would just love to be uncovering like these giant millipedes and stuff and and help preserving um, ancient history. I think that's cool as hell. No, or anthropology. My, I have a terrible I, fear that someone is going to uncover like a perfectly fossilized bug like that and it's going to become invasive and then suddenly in North America or something we'll have a species of giant centipede that exists that are as big as right, cars. Dave, you know how fossils work, right? Like we don't take them out of the ground and they come back to life. <laughs> right? Right. Unless we get no, to I, uh, no, Jurassic Park. No, perfectly preserved, not like perfectly fossilized. You know what I mean? L- like like an oh. amber or something, right? Like a, like, 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 a like a Jurassic bug. Park. And then they're like, we... Yes. <laughs> yeah. Okay? What if you have two of them, they start mating, and then and it, or multiplying in some way in nature, or like a fa- they find like a family of them in amber. Uh, no, eggs. They 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 cryogenically unfreeze the eggs like a whole nest Brian. of eggs, <laughs> and and they're the the eggs Brian. are the size of Volkswagen Beetles, <laughs> <laughs> and then they just they um they start eating the Burmese pythons that are like taking over Florida, <laughs> and and Florida problems are solved. <laughs> So many years ago, Burmese pythons were released into the Everglades in Florida, and they have no natural predators, so they've been prolific and hugely destructive. The pythons are destroying all the other, you know, natural parts of the habitat, like the birds and the other snakes, and and it's just an absolute mess. 
Um, and I just saw, I think it was capuchin monkeys or something like that were also released in the jungle area of Florida. And now they're taking off because there are no natural predators. Okay. So a group of monkeys got released from a zoo. They didn't mean to be, but it was like a hurricane or something and they got loose. And yeah. now they're like living in an, they're living on an island and they're also living in a cute, like a people's community and they're in like um like a state park or whatever and if you go there they will attack you like they're vicious they're not nice um do you know what the most invasive species is to florida right now humans i mean other than humans um is it the isn't there an argentinian ant colony that's basically destroying all the other ant colonies around the world Okay, I was talking about Florida. I have no idea about your Argentinian ants. Yeah, I don't know if it's Argentina, but there's a South American ant that is... They're these tiny little ants, and they are so aggressive with other ant colonies. Because if you didn't know this, ant colonies will battle said- with them. Like, Democrats. Yeah, it's definitely the Republicans. <laughs> um, yeah, so ants are hugely territorial, and they commit warfare with neighboring ants and other termite uh, species and nests and stuff. It's wild. And there's the South American ant, um, I think it comes from Argentina, that is just decimating ant colonies around the world right now. It's, it's kind of a big deal. Wow. But, and, anyway, what were you going to say? What's, what do you think of the most uh, invasive species is? So right now, I think it's the lionfish because it's eating and killing all the fish around Florida, which is totally messing with the food chain. Not only the human food chain, but the animal food chain. So it's eating all of the smaller fish and it's poisonous, which means anything that tries to eat it dies. So every like and there's no it doesn't have a predator. The only predator is humans and it is edible. So people go out with like um i don't know what they're called like the little slingshot spear guns that are connected to your hand you know what i'm talking about yeah spikes yeah the 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 pneumatic harpoon guns yeah but it's connected to your hand like you slingshot with your hand it's like a wrist harpoon yeah kind of cool i want one of those right anyway so trying to get the alligators to eat the 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 lionfish exactly so all of the species that are trying to eat the lionfish or are trying to take on anything end up dying. So it's, and they're massively poisonous, but they're just like wiping out an entire like uh, food chain of the fish that they can eat in their size. And they're, they're just getting bigger and bigger. It's getting bad. Checking it out. No, I was, I, I had a, I had an idea that it, it's wrong, um, but I thought the ant biomass was way larger than human biomass, but I was wrong. Uh, ants outnumber humans at least 2.5 million to one. Ants biomass is around 20% of human biomass. Nils, you should probably leave, buddy. I'm sorry. <laughs> Why? <laughs> oh, about to see something spooked? Oh, God. No, I'm ready. I'm bracing myself. Okay, go ahead. Wait. Did you send me something? No. Oh. Well, I'm kind of... I'm confused. I lost my train of thought. You all distracted me. The ant biomass also weighs about 12 megatons, which is about the equivalent of two pyramids of Giza. Imagine two great pyramids of Giza stacked up, but they're ants. <laughs> two. That means there's 40 pyramids of Giza that are human biomass, right? 20%. Oh, no, wait. You just outmathed me way too much. Yeah. I just, my brain hurt. Hold on. Go back. What? <laughs> Never mind. Um, algebra is hard. So if ant biomass is 20% and there's two pyramids of Giza, that means you have to multiply two by five, right? And that's that's 10. So there's 10 pyramids of Giza. I can't math today. 
Yeah, there are some parasitic funguses that will infect brains of not just ants, but mice too, and, and create erratic behavior so that the mice or ants get eaten by the creatures that eat them so that the parasite can reproduce in the stomach or intestines of the predator. It's, it's yeah, we live, yeah. <laughs> what kind of uh, brilliant, perfect design is that, huh? Man, life will exist yeah, where it that's can. That's what I hate when people are like, Oh, look at this universe was made for us. And I'm like, no, it wasn't. <laughs> look right. at these horrors. <laughs> Why do I feel like that's the beginning conversation for like Pickle Rick? Yeah. He's, yeah, not completely. Yeah. He's taken over the mind of like what, a mouse or a rat or something? It's there's a wasp. It's a wasp larvae that will infect I think it's Caterpillars? caterpillars yeah the caterpillar will then be yeah. possessed it like the <laughs> the yeah it Not changes possessed. the It'll behavior be eaten now oh wait are, are you thinking of a different you might be thinking of a different one there there's lots where it's like yeah yeah where it eats the caterpillar from the inside and then emerges like the the larvae comes out through oh it's gross it, yeah the the animal kingdom is uh, a brutal horrific place yeah it's like hey if this universe was made for us, why do some kids have to deal with bugs laying eggs under their skin? Yeah, you're you're right that all what water universe? came from out of space, but so did the rocks. Like like Earth is made up of stardust. Yes, our, um, life emerges from stardust ultimately. Did you want to? Um, because I assume you wanted debates. Did you want to restart your live so you could maybe get into the algorithm again? Yeah, I was thinking about it, but I'm kind of, I don't know, I kind of just prefer talking nerdy stuff with you guys for a few minutes and then getting offline. <laughs> Unless you really want to go fight. Do you want to do, you want to do some debates? No, it's up to you. It's up to you. It's your live, my guy. I'm fine with yeah. either. I'm not doing much today. I did something for you, Until Brian. later. I, I always feel so, like, energized to get into it with people, and then I just I lose talk the motivation. About Egypt. I want to talk about the pyramids. I kind of want to fight with people who think that aliens are real. I desperately want to have the conversation. Nils, do you know how many pyramids there are in Egypt? Uh, it's a baby hippo! Oh! <laughs> <laughs> it's a baby hippo just for you oh I love the eyelashes the, the rainbow eyebrows you're welcome. <laughs> you're welcome it's a baby hippo birds are not real <laughs> um, I haven't decided if the baby do you know how hard it was to make a baby hippo it just kept putting like a face on top of a face on top of a smoosh <laughs> yeah. <laughs> She's basically a inflated smoosh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, pretty much. So, yeah. So there's, there's over a hundred pyramids in Egypt. The first pyramid was just like a tomb with another tomb on top of it with another tomb on top of that. And they stacked tombs and they were like, huh. Mm. Like, there are multiple failed pyramids. Like, people forget, like, they didn't just, like, one day arise to the perfection of the Pyramid of Giza. Like, it was thousand years of trial and error and master craftsmen hitting a rock with a slightly harder rock. Like, <laughs> you, gotta, we're, you gotta talk about the craft, like, at Legitimately, <laughs> at some point when they got copper tools, they were going through three copper tools a day. Like, you got to understand, like, the amount of intensity that these men desperately wanted to make these things because <laughs> it was for their king, their god. It just, like, the thought that we have missing, like, levitation technology, like, it hurts my feelings. Yes, it's the giraffesis. Nope, wait, what was this? 
uh, the giraffe. The giraffe. <laughs> that's right. We're gonna have to start labeling these. Yeah, yeah. And in case anyone didn't realize this, <clears throat> it's hugely racist when people suggest that the the Egyptians couldn't have possibly built the pyramids. That's why the aliens had to bring their technology to them. That is a racist um, slight against the, the creative minds of the egyptians right despite the fact that they knew the yeah. world was round despite the fact that they knew that and to their credit perfectly the circumference of the earth because they did because they had learned they had created the math to learn this like let's let's talk about this they had sticks and rocks and these people figured out that the earth was round and it had the circumference of the earth. Yeah, right. within a few dozen meters. Like, it was incredibly were, accurate. Incredibly accurate and close. It hurts my feelings yeah. that we have gone through generations and generations and generations after the pyramids. And our ancestors were brilliant. And they go through the American education system coming out thinking the earth is flat. <laughs> right? Yeah. Yeah, someone said, uh, someone mentioned the History Channel. What a, what a tragic downfall. I remember when the History Channel, back in like the 890s, used to be legit, right? It was actual history. Now they're talking about ancient aliens and shit like that. It's just, it's Hurts pathetic. But hey, it's entertainment, right? And you got to sell ads and you got to be entertaining to sell ads. So it's uh, another great example of the capitalistic hellscape we exist in. Someone said ancient alien is fun to think about, but racist? Yeah, well... A little bit, a little bit. <laughs> so the idea goes like this. Well, I... the, the Egyptians couldn't possibly have come up with the technology to build the pyramids. So it must have been ancient aliens or some smarter civilization. But we know that's not logically sound, true, factual in any way. And people still spouting that nonsense either don't realize that it's a very racist concept or um, they intentionally do it because they're racist. And I don't know what's worse. I don't know which one is worse. <laughs> Yeah, like the idea is that um, they couldn't have done this because they're an inferior race, so something else had to have done it for them. Yeah. that That's kind of the idea. Even though it's like, you can look around the world and be like, oh wow, they're inventing stuff all around the world? Like, and doing really cool stuff all around the world? Like, during the Islamic Empire, like, um, and its rise, they were making, like, pseudo-robots, which were, like, serve tea and stuff which is like and then like later other civilizations started to make them too and then like man it's almost as if like people are just creative smart like creatures individual like doesn't matter of what your race is <laughs> oh the concept is basically that um ancient aliens had to have created the pyramids or something because you know, Egyptians couldn't have done it because they were basically an inferior race. Right. Yeah, the more you know. It's, it's, it, is, it amazes me <clears throat> how many honest mistakes people make w without realizing the implications. And I've done it too. Uh, good example. The other day I was in a live, well, I wasn't talking. I was just, you know, interacting in the chat with someone else who had their name was eight, eight, and then I don't remember, whatever word. And if you don't know what eight, eight means, then it, it's just innocuous. It, there's no reason no. behind it. My guess is this person was born in 1988, right? That's a perfectly logic conclusion. But in case you don't know, eight, the, the number eight, <clears throat> Or I'm sorry, the letter H is the eighth number in the alphabet. So eight eight stands for H H, which means Heil Schittler in racist coded speak. So if you see the word the letter uh the numbers eight eight, it could be completely ambiguous, like nothing to see here. Or you could be talking to a Schnazi. <laughs> yeah. So I, I direct messaged them and told them this. And they thanked me because they had no idea, right? Yeah, 
Yeah, the world is full of stuff like that. Like SS, if you see SS, same thing. That's more schnazi propaganda. Um, the the swastika itself is not inherently a a schnazi symbol. No, it was it was a symbol it's, of peace. Yeah, it was a it's Hindu been a, and Buddhist symbol. And Native Americans. For and, like, yeah, it's, it's and it was for like generations too. Symbol of peace yeah. and love. So people and would unity. Like, yeah, so like hippies would get this tattooed on them in America, and then World War Two broke out. Yep. And all these hippies were like, "Bro, this used to mean peace." Uh, Bro, yeah, I don't know what it means now. Um, can you imagine the symbols throughout history that we don't know of that were taken and then turned into? Like, how many people are going to remember the beauty of the symbol or just the horror? Right. How many right. newborn babies are named Adolf? <laughs> it's a, it's an... <laughs> Not many, I guarantee it. Right. Oh, man. Who controls the present now controls the past. Who controls the past controls the future. How's that saying go? That's a myth. What's a myth? He who controls the spice controls the universe. The yeah. galaxy. I forget. The universe. Yeah. Something something Dune reference. Even it's he it's who like, controls the I, spice I mean, controls the yeah. universe. Uh. <laughs> ah, okay. You controls the spice, controls the universe. Got it. I'm almost positive. Almost positive. <laughs> I don't know. I, I've watched Starship to Troop, Starship Trooper. I'm a weird. I have a weird grab bag of nerdy things that I've liked and watched and not watched. Did you finish Dune? It's a long one. Oh, I sent you a new hippo. No, oh. I never did. I only like. Read, I think I read like a bit of the first a long time ago, and I was like, "Oh, it's so cool how they have to, it's like, whoa, what an interesting concept! They have to like make erratic movements so that the worms think they're just like sand or wind or whatever on the thing." And then I like, and then some other stuff happened, and I got bored. And so I remember they were all like primitive people. Because my problem with Dune is that, <laughs> um, is that one, <laughs> they hyped up the movie so well like they hyped it up they made it look amazing and they were like zendaya and like all, like all of these super famous stars that were in it for like 1.3 seconds like it was like a flashback or it was like a memory and they weren't in the movie yeah. at all <laughs> and i was i literally sat down and watched this and i was like this is dumb i'm so angry yeah, it was one of the very few movies that I've gone to see in theater uh, because sorry. of all the hype. <clears throat> and um, I'm sure that for people who are really familiar with the Dune story, you know, the the true Dune nerds, it's a really oh, it's nice... Accurate. It was accurate. Yeah, it's, it's a great movie to nerd out on if you're already a Dune nerd. But as a non Dune nerd, <clears throat> so confusing, there was right? there was no there was no character development. There was no backstory. You were no, just you thrust into this world yep. where I had no idea what's going on. And yeah, pretty pictures, lots of sand and good visual effects. But the acting wasn't even that great. The yep. writing wasn't that great. And I'm a huge critic, so don't listen to a word I say. I'm just a... I'm sure that if I was a Dune nerd, I would have a better opinion on it. But Here's the thing, though. But if you're coming from the outside world and they spent millions on this movie... To sit down and watch a three-hour movie like that and be so yeah. confused is tragic. Because if you sit down and you're going to watch a nerdy movie like that, and you're like, why are there people walking through the desert? Oh, it's like Star Wars. Oh, it's not like Star Wars. Oh, it's like right. Star Wars. Oh, it's not like Star Wars. Oh, it's just, it's not, it's not, it's different. It's, hmm, it's kind of like that. Um, like, it's yeah, really I... confusing. Someone said the original was weak, and I, I haven't seen it for like a decade. And what, I think what was really captivating about the original is the concept of these sandworms and the you know some of the horror scenes in that movie. Um, but again, I can't really speak to the also, character think, development like, or anything. Uh... From my understanding of the setting, um, it seems pretty interesting. The idea that like humanity has like 
gone from this like technological age to this like pseudo medieval like magic age where instead of magic it's like psychic abilities yeah and, like, spaceships. Sp space dust like magic yeah, dust here's the thing though is that i can't get yeah. away from the fact that it is almost exactly like star wars and the yeah. the yeah but like get me through like the have you watched um the new mandalorian no. All right. Not so, gonna lie. No, after no, I, watching all the sequel films, yeah, I stopped. Uh, I, that, yeah. that killed Star Wars for me. Oh, that's fair. Okay, but like literally, they're walking through a desert and they're talking about like spice or whatever, or like what? And I'm like, literally, I'm like, oh, it's just gonna it's Dune. Yeah, even even though Dune may be the grandfather yeah. of sci-fi, it's like saying. It's like comparing the United States government as the best form of democracy. <laughs> no. <laughs> no, just because we were one of the original doesn't mean we did it right. <laughs> so Star Wars stole some stuff from Dune. That's cool, which makes more sense. But yeah. like it actually it makes a lot of sense actually. But um it's just ugh. the movie I expected yeah. to I be think better. You have to uh... Yeah, yeah, I think you have to appreciate it in a different way. Like, um, it's kind of like how when you read Shakespeare in English, if you appre if you think of it as a work of modern literature, motherfucker, my twelve, like I I know a twelve year old who could write this, okay? But then if you think about it as the first thing to define a genre and a way of writing, and to as a trailblazer in his work. And you can be like, okay, I understand where like shakes like where how to appreciate Shakespeare, you know? Can compare th compare that to The Hobbit. Well, when you realize that Shakespeare wrote most of his stuff in iambic pentameter, that alone is phenomenal. Like, no one does that anymore. <laughs> yeah. I mean, sure, but I mean, still, I could get a twelve-year-old to do that. I feel. Yeah. Yeah, you like, have to put it through Google Translate. <laughs> yeah. Hot take. The original Dune movie was great. Hey, if you liked it, then I'm glad you did. <laughs> uh, have you guys watched Starship Trooper before? Yeah. Trying oh, I to love bend. that movie. I'm trying to bend all my bad hobbits. Huh? What? <laughs> I think they meant habits. Trying no, we were to end the Hobbit. Trying. Oh, like imagine trying going to from end like the Hobbit all and my the Rings and like my bad habits. Yeah, maybe type that again. Uh, if anyone's looking for a really good modern sci-fi show, it's on Amazon Prime. It's called The Expanse. Yeah. I know I mention it all the time, but it's just that good. <clears throat> we're gonna have to rewatch it because I'm. Um, hellbound and determined because i feel like i've missed things yes yeah, it, yeah you can't watch it once you gotta watch it at least three times <laughs> it's so good have you ever read the expanse the book no but i want to i've my pile of books to read is so tall already um i might i might pick it up when i go on vacation sometime and just sit in my cabin for I've, so my family has a small hunting cabin. No, nobody hunts anymore. Skiing cabin, you know, it's close to one of the um, the big ski resorts in Maine. And I just want to go there for a week. No electricity, no phone. Just sit down and read The Expanse or something fantastic like that. So if I disappear for a week this spring or summer, that might be why. A bad hobbit is hard. But to if play. I disappear for two, call the cops. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I still don't know what you mean by a bad hobbit. <laughs> it's a joke. It's a joke. <laughs> okay. It's like a bad habit is hard to break, but a bad hobbit is hard to break. I don't think I'm autistic, but jokes are just lost on me sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> it's hard when they're in like text like this <laughs> I don't think I'm autistic but yeah oh my dear no I don't think I'm autistic but my psychiatrist did say go get tested for autism because I can't I can't say wait I've tried to 
Fuck, I'm trying to remember how I said this joke originally. This is a true story. I, I like to joke about being Schrodinger's autist because yeah. <laughs> my, my psychiatrist is like, hey, dude, you're autistic, but I can't, like, write that on your uh, thing because I'm not, like, a specialist. But, like, it's clear to me you're autistic. Go talk to the specialist so he can write down that you're autistic. And I'm like, if I never go to this specialist, am I really autistic? <laughs> Check me. <laughs> Medical system. <laughs> Boom. Schrodinger's autist. <laughs> um, true. Yes. <laughs> but also false. It's both true and false at the same time. <laughs> yeah. I don't, I don't uh, know. Things couldn't come out of the ceiling. Mm. <laughs> I know. No, I know what you mean. Yep. It, it's like, um, it's like, I think I said this before, but I've had like, originally when i first got a bed my parents got me a bed frame and i was like please do not get me a bed frame for the longest time i didn't understand why they were like okay like you you never explain why because i'm like i don't want to explain because it's stupid or whatever and i was like okay fine but the reason is because i would hallucinate little arms crawling out from under the bed yeah you've told me this story before that That is terrifying And I would Ugh. be like, oh, man, now I got to go and sleep on the couch. So I slept on the couch for a week until they got rid of my bed frame. And then they were like, hmm, something is weird here. But I'm sure he'll tell us when something's wrong. <laughs> yeah. I have, to, I have to decide if we're going to start the Lisa uh, background sales pitch. Yeah, you really should. Um, I, I think I think people would buy these pictures from you. You and you don't have to charge much, but give people an opportunity to to share their appreciation and and help you buy that laptop that you've been talking about. I have I have some of the money for the laptop. It's just you know everyone else is being a bitch. <laughs> yeah, I don't know how many times. Yeah, somebody said make them NFTs. I just don't know how to do that. You need a lawyer, <laughs> basically. Dude, if someone tells me one more time to get an attorney, I'm going to freak the f out. One yeah, more but this is today. for something else. Oh, this thank is you, for bro. something else. Thank yeah, you, bro. you need now. You need two me... lawyers. Oh, thanks, my guy. One person tells me to get an attorney today. <laughs> I'm going to scream. <gasps> uh, do you want to share that story about your dad that you've been teasing me with? Oh my god, yes, but yes, it deserves a proper background. Okay. I got, so I got excited. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Nils, do you mind um, keeping Brian entertained for a second? <laughs> I got it. Okay. <laughs> no, you brat. I don't know what I'm doing. I'm sorry. Uh, you, you have to hold my hands now. That's part of the deal. <laughs> Someone said, Chels, get a lawyer. Uh, get a lawyer, Chels. Uh, <laughs> make them nfts <clears throat> yeah so i've been encouraging okay. chelsea to start an etsy page and then putting digital media up so people could you know buy high quality images of these freaking awesome giraffes and other things that she's creating um and yeah I've, hmm. I've been kind of meaning to monetize my time a little bit too as much as i hate it but i am spending an awful lot of time on here so um i got a patreon account but i haven't set it up with my bank account yet uh what's the other one? Oh, i i want to do tiktok subscriptions but i'm not eligible let, yet for some reason um um before you get mad at me i am and i don't know why well thank you i you are what eligible and i oh, don't know why yeah that makes I, I, no sense to me but I did get a little pop up the other day saying that would you like to blah 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 blah, and I was like, mm, I don't understand this. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know what it is. If it's just a. So some of your videos have gotten super viral, right? They like they just spread and spread, and I none of mine have done that. I've gotten like, I don't know, 15,000 views on one of my videos. Normally it's a few thousands, you know, between couple, two and 5,000 per video. Yeah, I was like, I have 100,000 views on more than one video. 
right? And I think that's that might be part of the reason why you're eligible for subscriptions. Even though I have more followers, it's not the viewership. It's, I don't know, it's weird. <clears throat> um, I don't think that I should... Okay, so I'm putting in the word... Well, you know what we're about to talk about. Um, and it's coming up with very feminine features that are exposed. <laughs> um, yeah, hmm. I know. Really interesting, right? Hmm. So, um, maybe we should restart the live when you're ready, uh, but I'll give everyone a teaser. So, Chelsea hasn't told me hardly anything yet, but she's got a really juicy story about her dad, and it has to do with um, the fact that her dad works in the type of research that studies ghosts or captures ghosts. I don't get it yet. But, what? Uh, um, it's, paranormal. Yeah. it's paranormal research. Paranormal research. Her yes. father is a parano paranormal researcher, and I am fascinated. <laughs> Wait, for the government and their creepy, weird projects, is he allowed to talk about that stuff? <laughs> really thought of warrior nuns. Oh, yeah, we can tell. <laughs> I don't want to spoil it for anyone else. Warrior nuns. We finally finished it. <clears throat> it's a show on Netflix. It's absolutely bonkers. Hilarious. Um, they're so serious, but so silly at the same time. And it's a great combo. It's it's so good. It, it was just so entertaining. Um, it's basically nuns that are ninjas. <laughs> we call them ninjas. Um, and it's, it's just a funny, entertaining show. I think everyone should make the time to watch at least two or three episodes. No, and if you you're not, to, enter you, you got to get to the second season. Cause if you think phallic shaped donuts are hysterical, you must watch it. Yeah. Yeah. The second season, it really ramps up. The first season is great. Second season is great. Um, it's just worth your time. If if you like silly, humorous shows, it's definitely worth your time. <laughs> Ninjas, I'm sold. Definitely. <laughs> what? Oh, we're watching Lucifer now. Chelsea's already seen it. I haven't, and I'm I'm pretty entertained. <clears throat> it's funny for different reasons. Um, it reminds me a lot of another good show that I really enjoyed watching called Blacklist. It's basically this person, like, um, who's the guy in Blacklist? Raymond Reddington. He's abusing the FBI to solve his own personal vendettas and cases, but he's feeding the FBI um, information that they want to catch criminals. So it's a very similar parallel between those two shows. Um, and Lucifer is fun because of the quips, the funny dialogue. It's it's really good. The first several episodes are much better than the later episodes. We're, are we in season two yet? I don't think so. No. Not quite yet. No, we made her honorary target practice bullseye. Who? What? Uh, I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> <clears throat> uh, what other good shows are, are everyone watching? Any fan favorites here? <sighs> I've just been re-watching some old shows. Like, um, there's this anime that's really good called Ping Pong the Animation. Yeah. Which is just like, it, it's unironically like, like a 10 out of 10 show. That's, it seems, it's, it's like really simple, but it's actually like really deep in like a really, in a really interesting way. What's the name it's of it? I'm going to write really some of these story. down, by the way. <laughs> ping, ping Pong the Animation. The Animation. Um, do you consider, um... Oh, what was the name of that show? It was a spoof on Dungeons and Dragons. It was an animated show. Um, 
going to open up Netflix to remind myself what it was called. To be fair, a lot of anime is very cringe, but it's only anime technically. Ping Pong the Animation is only technically anime because it's Japanese animation, but it's more like a... It's animated more like a cartoon or like... Yeah. So oh, like more Arc- like a mixture between Western and Eastern animation. Arcane was really good. It was the animated show about um, uh, what's oh, that? League of Did Legends. You? League of Legends. Yeah, I thought I never played League of Legends, but I watched the show and it blew my mind. I think it was really, really good. I thought it was I uh, the hot take. I thought it was fucking garbage. Really? Why? I okay. There was nothing super interesting. Like they hint to all these interesting things in their world, and they could have had interesting stories, but nothing really gets resolved. No one really talks about anything. The the one character that would be new to the lore that would have been interesting is like. I, I don't want to spoil anything. Uh, I, I forgot, because maybe not everyone here has watched it. But I, I think the character development was fun. You see you see the the children grow up and fill their roles. And I, I don't know. I thought the premise, the conflict between the good guys and bad guys and the good guys becoming bad guys, that was all pretty dynamic. And I really liked the art style. I think the art style really uh, oh, the art helped actually. sell it for me. Yeah. That I will vouch for the art and like the art direction because Riot has always had a really strong art team. The Legend so of Vox Mechana. Really, really that's nice. the one I was thinking of. The D and D spoof. The Legend of Vox Mechana. That was really good. Oh, I haven't watched that, huh? Um, I've been recommended The Good Place before and Battlestar Galactica. I need to watch those. Oh, yeah, The Good Place. I need to watch that. Yeah. It's on my list. It's very up on my list because apparently it's really good. Restart live with Rapid Fire. I'm way back in the comments, by the way. Uh, Yeah, I'm probably going to restart the live when Chelsea is ready with her new background. All of Black Mirror. Yeah, I I was just thinking about my favorite episode of Black Mirror the other day. It's the episode where um, a guy crashes his car and it kills his um, fiance, And it was his fault, uh, but they crash into a drunk driver. So the law considers the drunk driver to be at fault. So he was um, he wasn't charged. For while driving, while distracted, and then he has this vendetta to get back at the creator, the CEO of the company of the app that was distracting him while driving, and it's it, it's a really riveting episode. Oh, I know that one. Yeah, the acting I, was top notch. That's a really good one. It's very silly sounding, but it's surprisingly, like, interesting, just because of how it's executed. The new Bleach is good? Uh, never heard of that. Uh, Rick and Morty. I don't yeah, know. I, um, I was a big fan of season one and two of Rick and Morty, but after that, they just kind of sold out and commercialized the show, and it lost its edge. It was really good, but... Yeah. Dark is good. I'll look into dark. Yeah, I liked how in seasons one and two it showed like 
Rick cared. Like, he had very... Like, his flaws actually put Morty in danger. But, like, at the end of the day, when he's sober, Rick cares. Like, in Season 2, Episode 1, he, like, thinks he's sacrificing himself to save Morty. But then he's like, oh, wait, no, I can save myself. And then he saves himself at the very end. But it still showed he cared. But then they, like, I feel like they went over the top with it where there was just, like... I don't know. Like, I, I like the subtlety at the beginning. Yeah. The Peripheral is on Prime. I've never heard of that. P-E-R-I-P-H-E-R-A-L. Looking at that. Outlander um, is a show that I've been meaning to watch, too. Lander. I don't know if anyone's even suggested it. just came into my mind. My parents just watched it and really liked it. Have you watched the Black Mirror one where it's like um, Nosedive, I think it's called, with the like social media app where you read each other? Yeah, I've seen them all. Um, some episodes are better than others, but yeah, that that one was also memorable. Where she crashes the wedding... Mm-hmm. Yeah, fingers and ears. Yeah, go watch Black Mirror. I won't spoil any more for you. <clears throat> but that one I was talking about with uh, with the social media vendetta, it, it was just the the acting alone. The the um, antagonist, the guy that's trying to commit this crime, his acting was perfect. Black Mirror is on Netflix, I think, still? I believe so. Dude, it's so hard to tell now. There's, like, as many freaking, like, pay-for providers as there are yep. cable TV shows there were. Networks. The Man in the High Castle. Uh, that's been recommended to me before. I'm going to write it down. The man in the high Castile. That ninety show. Oh, we started watching that. Yeah, that was, uh, we got through two episodes and that was fun. Uh we'll continue that. <laughs> I'll we'll have Netflix because it's free and prime. Um, oh, where did Chelsea go? There she is. And by we, you mean the royal we, of course. The royal we. Yeah, so many platforms now. Um, As long as they don't have commercials, I'm happy. I'm allergic to commercials. I break out in hives. <clears throat> I'm fine with commercials. I just hate boring commercials because it's like, come on, dude, you can do so much with, like, a commercial. I hate commercials. All right, there's, there's one source of really good commercials. That is the YouTube show called... Um, some more news with Cody, Cody's Shody, and they they ha- they usually have two ad breaks in their show. It's like it's like an hour long <laughs> news. It's a satirical news show, but they're talking about real news items and articles and subjects and stuff. Um, I highly recommend it. So they read either Cody or his. Uh, Girlfriend, producer, fiance, wife, I don't know what their relationship status is, but it, it's either her or Cody reading these promotional, you know, like uh, athletic greens. And they're just so funny. They, they basically say the most ridiculous things while promoting these um, products, and I find it entertaining. <laughs> 
Oh, I like um the were the those ads made by <laughs> there's this YouTuber called Internet Comment Etiquette who basically mm. is just for lack of a better term, just a professional troll. <laughs> and uh his ads are just so funny. <laughs> They're incredibly dumb. Nice. Uh, all, as well as the rest of his videos, because, oh my god, it's so entertaining to see him just, like, <laughs> just type some bizarre, insane stuff to someone. <laughs> no, I haven't oh. seen Resident Alien, but I did write it down. It sounds interesting. <clears throat> yeah, no, no spoilers. Um, I started Dexter. I just didn't, it didn't jive with me. Um, maybe I'll try it again someday, but I started, I, don't know. I never finished. Yeah. I watched a couple episodes and I'm like, eh, eh. All right. So it's up to you. You do officially have two spoopy backgrounds. The last of us. I'm going to write that down. All right, people last show recommendations. I'll give you another couple minutes and then. I'm going to restart the live, and we'll see how that goes. It's spoopy. It's real spoopy. The Last of Us. <laughs> yeah, my, my, my favorite ads are the one that pop up on TikTok while I'm scrolling. Day, right? Just scroll past them. <laughs> Watched what? Community? No, I no. don't think so. I want to watch Resident uh, Alien. It's, it's about these group of misfits who go to um, a community college, and it's like it 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 gets kind of it's kind of slow in the beginning, but then it starts to figure out what it wants to be, and then there's uh, the season we don't talk about because it's that bad, <laughs> and then it goes back to form, and then it slowly dies, and it has a really melancholy end that it's perfect hmm. for it. Interesting. Right, have you watched American Horror Story? Uh, long ago. All right, so same. It was long ago, and I stopped around Lady Gaga because it, it just broke me. <clears throat> but there are some, apparently, that have been good since. Hmm. The problem is, is how do you distinguish the good from the, the trump ones? Get their character. Shit's, oh, I have seen Shit's Creek. Yeah, that was, that was interesting. Yep. I agree. The first three episodes were weird, but I did stick with it. Glass Onion was... Yeah, I liked Glass Onion. That was that an interesting was really show. Good. I liked it, just because I had no idea where it was going. Mm-hmm. Yep, mm -hmm. some really good twists at the end. Uh, in case anyone hasn't heard us talking about The Man from Earth, it's on YouTube. It's, it's a full-length film, um, but if you're... If you are hanging out with us, nerdy folk here talking about rainbow giraffes and <laughs> epistemology and stuff, I promise, make the time to watch The Man from Earth. Can we watch that again? Um, <clears throat> yeah, I want to watch that again. We should watch that again. Uh, one of, one of um, my, my guests um, recommended it to me here on TikTok, and I'm so glad he did. Uh, you can find it, it on Budapest? YouTube. No, it was... I think it was real mon money jiggles or something like that. <laughs> I just want. <laughs> oh yeah! By the way, if you do watch Community, I think Barry. one episode is missing <laughs> from Netflix. <laughs> You'll have to watch that on another site or something <laughs> because huh. I think the funniest thing is no one actually found it racist. Because the whole joke was that, like, what, like, the Someone joke wasn't, the be, like, basically the joke included one. blackface. Oh, well, the yeah, episode, it. yeah. Season, not one, but season, um, two. Hmm. But it's such a good episode, so it's like, it's a, you gotta watch it. All right, folks. Are you ready, Chelsea? Shall we restart? Yeah, I stepped outside to worship Lisa. Ah, yes. <clears throat> don't forget out. to Beam us don't out. forget Beam to smoke out. your leafy greens. 
Oh. Um, I am in Be fact right back. Going to hit the Benjamin. <laughs> is, it, <laughs> is that technically worshiping Lisa if it's no longer green? <laughs> it's she's rainbow colored, mm -hmm. so all colors count. <laughs> That's true. Um, if you're yeah, not and I following... see all colors after, so... <laughs> if you're not following Lisa, you should follow Lisa. It's Lisa underscore the underscore rainbow underscore... No, wait. Lisa the rainbow giraffe, but in between all of the letters is underscores. Or in between all of the words is underscores. That's the one. <laughs> this is fucking Christ. Smoke Lisa another one, Stoney. Lisa Christ! <laughs> <laughs> Lisa Christ. Oh, Can we be clear how that dare I'm officially you? Gonna, I'm officially going to try and put like Jesus hair on Lisa. Like I don't know how, but I'm going to try. <laughs> oh my! What? Why would you do such a heinous thing? And in a robe. Horace and Pete. I am a big fan of Louis C.K. Except for his, you know weird sexual stuff, but he is a great comedian. I used to oh, be a really, Brian? huge fan. Really? Yeah. Crown of, of Thorns. <laughs> How do really we feel about Crown of, of that leaves? stuff, too? Do we feel about Crown of Leaves? I feel like she needs a Crown of Leaves. Someone said Crown of Thorns, but she's not Jesus. She's Lysus. <laughs> Lysus. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, what did, we call, think... what did we call? What did we call this the other day? We called this something. What, the giraffesis? The pegasus no, giraffe? No, no, no. The, the Lisa religion. Lisaism? Oh. Yeah, something like that. Lisaism? Lisaism. Lisa Farianism? I don't know. <laughs> no. Lisaism. I think it was, wasn't it? Uh. Lysias? I don't know. Damn it. I forgot now. We'll go with Lisaism. Lisaism? <laughs> Well, because if, if you start to go Pastafarianism, he's going to be mad. He only rides her, okay? On Sundays. <laughs> or is On it Sundays. Fridays? Is it Friday? Yeah. Yeah, Friday is uh, the holy day for the Pastafarians. The, the, yep, the day of worship. You're supposed to dress like a pirate and drink beer. Uh, and Tuesday is the holy day for Lisa because it's when we get tacos. <laughs> Taco Tuesday. The Muslims got the Fridays. Can't the Pastafarians have Thursdays? Uh, <clears throat> make like, like a leaf and restart the live. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we're restarting now. I've got the background. I'll see you on the oh, other bye. side. You get to pick one. That's up to you. Okay. All right, Nils, hop out so you don't lose your coins. Oh, he did. Au revoir. <laughs>